Today is an exciting milestone in our state as we gather together here today to share the outcomes of the collective work of so many. These people have taken enormous hours out of their normal schedules to participate and rally around a cause, and that is shaping the future of South Australia. In terms of the program's engagement, I'd just like to refer you to how we actually communicated and worked with so many. We engaged with more than 2,500 people, in addition to those of you who have seen this process for the very first time today. As the Governor has mentioned, the importance of our state's economic transition is critical. We believe the key factors in this transition are a strong and bold leadership to chart a clear vision, a plan, and importantly, a governance framework to get there, a community who, who are united by this vision, have a sense of purpose and urgency, a commitment to purposeful change, and a commitment to action. On behalf of the Shaping SA partners, comprising Nick Reid of Bank SA, Professor Michael Barber, Flinders University, Dr Don Russell, Department for State Development, Hamilton Calder, from CEDA and KPMG, I'm delighted to take you through the Shaping the Future of SA report today. I'm going to outline the journey, then I'm going to share with you some of the detail around the top 10 objectives, and importantly, I'd like to recognise and thank the enormous contribution of those who have participated in this process. Firstly, looking at the background, the Governor has taken us through the map of how we've got here today. In 2014, the Shaping SA program tapped into something special. It was evident on that day in February that people, individuals, us, had constructive ideas and views, but not an avenue by which we could share them, discuss them, debate them and rank them. This was critical. Seeing this and listening to you, KPMG designed and built a strategic consultation program with the wonderful support of our founding partners, tailored to this very important direction that we're going to head in. The program met with a clear objective. That was, we need to examine what we do right now. There was a sense of urgency, a sense of action that was required to grow the South Australian economy. It must, not, it must, not be, must not be a doorstep, it must be action driven. The workshops, workshops invited bold leadership by all of those to share, challenge and learn from one another's ideas and build actionable outcomes. Collaboration was key. It was wonderful to see people from different sectors working together. Ordinarily they would be competitors, but they all had one purpose in mind, and that is how do we change the conversation that we're having about South Australia today for the future? Next slide, thank you. I'd just like to share with you the theme leaders, and I'll leave this up there for you to consider and look at the participants. But it was clear to us that we needed to be broad ranging in who assisted in developing the themes and the workshops. We chose experts in their fields to help us through this process, not only in South Australia, but outside of South Australia. We had people from Infrastructure Australia attend the workshops when we were discussing the future of infrastructure in South Australia. They gave of their time and their expertise, their professional judgment and skill, but importantly, what you sensed was a working together to drive the outcomes that we need to see here today. The collective output from these theme work workshops amounted to about 89 actionable outcomes, but these were too many. They needed to be grouped and consolidated, they needed to be digestible, and they needed to be actionable. So through a ranking process that was based around ease of, ease of implementation and benefit to the state, they were accordingly ranked and they are ranked into the top 10 items that you see here today. And sitting in behind the top 10 items is an enormous amount of detail 
in a report that was delivered to the EDB last week. So now I'd like to take you through the top ten. Next slide, please. Create a vision for South Australia. This captured the minds and the hearts of all the workshop participants. Creating something long-term for South Australia reflects the values of boldness, caring, positivity, honesty and passion. Improving South Australia's inbound and outbound trade. Review, develop and expand our programs and processes to grow and improve South Australia's two-way economy when it comes to trade performance and global competitiveness. Shift regulation to become outcomes focused, to reduce the burden of regulation, to attract new businesses to South Australia, to improve their global competitiveness and incentivise innovation and high performance. Develop new ideas to access funding in a sector that is crying out for capital, in particular the enterprise sector. Small, medium enterprise is the backbone of our economy in South Australia. We need to drive the linkages and incentivise collaboration between universities, um, businesses and government. Creating round tables around those industry and core sectors that can switch on and ignite our economy quickly. Improving the skills of our business leaders was seen to be absolutely fundamental. Leadership, strategy, business planning, core skills that are required in our sectors here in South Australia. Commercialise more intellectual property. And there's a lot of depth that went in behind this very specific theme here. We had universities working shoulder to shoulder to deliver very tangible actions. Maximising the use of our existing infrastructure. We've spent, we've spent up big around this particular precinct and others. So how do we now flip the question around to how do we use that infrastructure much more productively? and increasing skilled and business migration. I'd now like to take you through um, three of these actions in a bit more detail. We don't have time to go through all ten, but what I am happy to say is that all ten and the detailed actions sitting beside them are now upon the EDB website for your review and consideration. Creating a vision for South Australia. In any successful enterprise, having a clear direction and a sense of purpose is all important, especially for your people to follow. We need a vision for the state for all to rally behind, to help transition our culture and our economy. We need to change the conversations that we're having about South Australia in our national journeys and international journeys. We need to tell a different story about our state. It needs to be easily understood, believable and can be followed. It is said that vision without action is merely a dream. And action without vision is just passing the time. So with every good vision, there are actions, and we've outlined 10 subsets of those actions, required to be taken to deliver it. We then create and publish and hold ourselves accountable those, to those. Both government, academia, business, everyone has a vested interest in this. Leadership will translate this vision into a reality. Another action I'd like to take you through is unlocking funding for South Australia. Thank you. We need to develop alternative forms of finance to help our small medium enterprises invest in innovation, invest in technology and capital to allow them to grow and prosper. Businesses over the last few years have cut back on their investment because they've been facing very strenuous challenges from global markets, from global debt markets and from within the cost of doing business. Banks have tightened up lending, no question, since 2009, albeit that we're hearing that the banks are starting to review this. The two key requirements to unlock finance for small medium enterprise are the ability to service that debt, in other words, the cash flow generated by the business, but importantly, a second characteristic 
that is being very much scrutinised by the banks is collateral, the security that's available. Now, many growing businesses simply haven't built up sufficient collateral or they have invested that collateral in trying to survive or grow new enterprises. Now, this particular issue has been recognised globally by governments and business. How do we free up collateral so that the banks are able to more securely lend in growing and successful enterprises? Accordingly, a key recommendation, number one, is to look at alternative financing mechanisms. And schemes such as partial guarantee schemes that are being successfully deployed in the UK, in the EU and in Canada have successfully unlocked capital from banks and other institutions to businesses that need it to grow. They have helped them access capital to grow. They have also allowed them to invest in innovation, the intangible that is required for these businesses to survive. But a core component of this is that it needs to be successfully and properly implemented. We are very excited by this particular recommendation and the others on finance. The other action that we'd like to draw your attention to is how we strengthen the linkages between businesses, universities, research institutions and government. We see three key things emerging constantly when we talk to business. Their ability to access expertise, in other words, training, education, referral to professional advice, their connections. In South Australia, and in fact in any jurisdiction, connections do matter. It does matter who you know. And this was also seen vitally important to our SME business base to create those connections. We had some wonderful examples offered up of angels without capital. It necessarily isn't finance or capital that some of these businesses need. They need the expertise to help them on their advisory boards. And there were people willing and able to offer that expertise without charging a fee. Funding was the one that we've already covered. The key thing with this specific issue is how do we connect all that up? And there are ways of doing this. We have found and referred to the relevant bodies here who are charged with the responsibility ways of connecting these three elements, expertise, funding and connections. And so we believe that in South Australia we are agile enough and flexible enough to build this kind of engine. Thank you. The full report was submitted to the EDB on the 1st of August. The full report contains an executive summary process and the appendices of all the workshops. It comprises over 100 pages of dialogue, ideas, concepts that the participants volunteered their time to deliver. A summary report will be available on the EDB website, as I mentioned. And your attendance today and the fact that the Premier and the Chair of the EDB have shown great interest apologies, demonstrates our state's agility and ability to work together to deliver tangible outcomes. Leadership is the key. The Shaping SA community has clearly shown the real need for private enterprise to better support private enterprise, that is business helping business, and we're seeing tangible outcomes of this, and clever collaboration between private enterprise, universities, research institutions and government. Premier, we, the Shaping SA community, are wanting to work with your government. We have delivered these actions in good faith and we eagerly look forward to your response, but equally we would like to be a part of the process of implementation. Thank you very much.